Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about our marginal product of capital which is sometimes notated MP subscript K or just MPK and I'm going to concentrate on the continuous case in this video so I'm working with mathematical functions. I did do a video on the discrete case, I'll link to it in the description below if that's useful to you. But just to start at the beginning, we're going to have a production function that tells us that our output, which is Y, depends on or is a function of some inputs to production, which will include capital, which we notate K, and often we also include labor L, and sometimes we might include some other stuff, for instance, land T or some other stuff still. In words, our marginal product of capital will be equal to the change in output when we increase our level of capital by some marginal amount. So we're increasing capital and we see what happens to output. When we're using continuous functions to describe our production process, we're going to take the derivative of our production function with respect to capital, and that will give us our marginal product of capital. Now derivatives are just really very small changes. So the fraction here can be read we're looking for the change in output given a marginal or very small change in capital. Importantly, this analysis is all done ceteris paribus, so labor, land, all of our other inputs to production are being held constant. So just as an example, let's take a production function of the form y is equal to k to the power of alpha times l to the power of beta. And here alpha and beta will lie between zero and one. And this is actually an example of what we call a Cobb-Douglas production function. It's a pretty common production function used in economics. Taking the derivative of this function with respect to capital, we're going to get alpha times k to the power of alpha minus 1 times l to the power of beta. And this is our marginal product of capital. If we had some figures for labor and capital and our alpha and beta, we just substitute those figures in to find our marginal product. So for instance, if L was 100, K was 25, and both alpha and beta were 0.5, if we substitute that into our formula, we would get our marginal product of capital equal to 0.5, that's alpha, times 25, that's capital K, to the power of 0.5 minus one, times 100, that's our levels of labor, to the power of 0.5, that's beta. Now our exponent here on capital ends up being negative 0.5, so 0.5 minus 1 is negative 0.5. And then we can see that 25 to the power of negative 0.5, if we rewrite this as a denominator, this gets rid of the negative in the exponent. So we can get this expression here, 0.5 times 100 to the power of 0.5 divided by 25 to the power of 0.5. Now anything to the power of a half is really just the square root and the square root of 100 is 10 and the square root of 25 is 5. 10 over 5 is 2 so we get 0.5 times 2 which is 1. In words, when all of our parameters and variables are at the levels that I specified, if we increase capital a little bit, Holding everything else constant, our output would increase by one. So that's finding our marginal product of capital when our production functions are continuous equations. One thing that we might take notice of is the sign of our marginal product. In my example here, you can see that we did get a positive number back, so one is a positive number. And positive results for our marginal product of capital more generally mean that there is a positive relationship between capital and output. So as capital K increases, our output Y increases. Now this would be the expected sign. It's fairly intuitive that if you add more input into your production process, you get more output. You could possibly get a negative marginal product of capital, which would mean that as we add more capital, our output would decrease. This would not be the expected sign, but I suppose it's still possible and that's what it means if you get a negative sign. That's it for this video though. A related topic that I didn't go through is how we can see diminishing marginal product when we have continuous production functions. I'll link to that video in the description below when it's finished. Thank you so much for watching this video though. I really hope that the video helped. I'll see you next time and have a good one.